Hello. I did my first art materials shop of the year this week, plus I have a couple of other things to show you. I have a few books which I've not shown you before. I think I got these towards the end of last year actually, but they're really lovely so I thought you might like to take a look. I'll just show you this one now. It's Drawing with Charcoal by Kate Boucher. Some of you might remember that I bought some charcoals last year and I did a few pieces with them, but I didn't feel very skilled with them or wasn't very satisfied with the results. So I decided to get a book on charcoal to actually learn a little bit more about techniques using them. And I like the style of the illustrations in this book. So... I haven't read any of my new books yet. I tend to have a quick flick through at the pictures and then come back to them later. I think I really like that her work is quite, it's almost verging on abstract, that there are definite landscape elements, for example, to them. A bit about charcoal itself. There's quite a few initial exercises just so you can get to grips with what the charcoal is going to do. So like removal techniques. And then there's a little bit about combining with soft pastels as well. So yeah, this won't be everyone's cup of tea, but this is a style of charcoal that I'm really drawn to and kind of the kind of thing that I wish I could do with charcoal. So yeah, Drawing with Charcoal by Kate Boucher, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So the pictures that I've done most recently, I've been trying to go for looser styles and with a more abstract element to them. So this is the one that I did with uh, mainly using a credit card to paint with, which I thoroughly enjoyed doing. And then I've done this abstract and I used the credit card a little bit on this one. So I really wanted to play with the idea of using some tools a little bit different from the standard paint brushes that I normally do. So a few of the things in my art haul relate to that. I bought these both from Amazon. And these are like paint brushes, but with like a solid silicone brush part. So one inch and two inches. And the one inch seems more flexible than the two inch but I thought they might be pleasant for moving paint around and then there's also this Liquitex freestyle brush they come in a variety of widths and I opted for the three inch so they're quite firm bristles well soft soft to the touch fairly rigid. I just thought it might be nice to um, move paint around a surface. And then I have this parcel from Jackson's Art, which has a couple of things in it I bought to attempt looser painting with, plus some other supplies. So I've got a Princeton Neptune brush. So it's a number one script brush and I'd seen somebody painting 
gouache with this actually, getting really nice thin lines with gouache. I know I already like the Princeton Neptunes a lot, so I thought I'd try this one out. And then I don't actually remember what this is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I wanted to try out a larger palette knife. I've got this little palette knife that I've had for years and use it for a few details here and there. But after using the credit card paint for the painting, I like the idea of having the longer, the longer surface area there and having that movement with it. And then a couple more things I wanted to try out were these Princeton Catalyst tools. So this is kind of like a soft silicon wedge. Um, again, for you know manipulating paint. Princeton do these in a number of different finishes with like serrated edges and different things. And I just wanted to try this large flat one. So the, this is the W06. And then there's these two rigid, quite rigid. There's a slight bit of flexibility, but not in the same way as the silicon. The silicon. So these are from the Catalyst Contour range. And this is the 62. Yeah, so I think, I don't know if the W is the wedge, and then there's an, a few wedges. And then the contours. 61 and 62, just a large and a small serrated edge. And then something that I'm very excited about are the paints in here. I talked about them a while back and I said that I'd been interested in the Lutia paints. So I did some paint swatching trying to work out which Lutia paints, which colours to choose and I ended up going for the five that I initially, I initially liked the look of, so I cannot wait to play with these and swatch these out. I went for the orange, the yellow, the blue, the brown and the carmine. A couple of people said that the yellow didn't have a great colour payoff, but I'm really, really liking this kind of almost chartreuse -y kind of yellow. So I went with my original choice of colours. And then I've got a, a tube of Aqua Lino Druck. So this is water soluble lino printing ink, um, a Prussian blue. And this is just a replacement. I used up the last of my blue when I was making lino prints for a recent craft market. So I'll take a look at another book now. Also this year, I've been enjoying water mixable oil paints. I don't really know anything about oils or the theory and how you're supposed to use them. And I'd seen this book about the Oil Painter's Colour Handbook uh, by Todd Casey. And I thought I'd take a look at this one. It's an absolutely gorgeous book. It's got a lot of examples of different styles of oil paintings. So obviously the emphasis is on colour and it talks a lot about colour theory, um, colour values, a colour wheel. It just looked to be a book with a lot of information in, just so I can educate myself on everything. I love that it talks about the different pigments, where they come from. And it looks at different colours that uh, different styles of art have used.
I love the fact that as it's teaching you like different colour schemes for example it's just showing really good examples of each of these I really like all of the illustrations. They're so well like annotated and they look like really clear. Underpaintings, the theory behind that. mediums to use with oil. So yeah, an absolutely beautiful book. Oh, and the last thing that I got from Jackson's Art That was another A4 sketchbook. Well, it's actually a little bit larger than A4. And this is Pith's Oro Blanco sketchbook. So the only other one I've got in a similar size is Talon's Art Creations book, which I really enjoy using. But the paper is quite yellowy. And I saw Katie Moody here on YouTube with this sketchbook, and I thought it looked really interesting. So hardback cover and the paper's a bit whiter I think if I show you the I don't know if you can see the difference there it's still not pure white but it yeah it is noticeably whiter than the art creation sketchbooks and the other thing is because the spine is bound in this way it can lie completely flat so I mean, the art, the art creation's not too bad. But this is even flatter. It's nice thick paper. Let's see what it says. So it's recycled, the cover's recycled board. Certified sustainable paper, 200 grams per square meter. Yeah, so we'll give that a go. Something you might have seen me using in previous videos are these Faber-Castell translucent gelatos. And I don't know if they've stopped making them, but they seem a bit hard to get your hands on now. I bought these on eBay. I do quite enjoy them. And there was another set of pastels that I wanted to try and get hold of. So I've been looking out for them for quite a while and I ended up buying these from eBay as well. So I'll show you the colours together. The translucent set is lovely kind of muted natural colours, but there are no blues in it or brighter colours. So there were a couple of ones that I wanted to add to the to these. So another book that I came across a while back is this Drawing for Illustration by Martin Salisbury. And there are a couple of books of his that I really like the look of. He's done one on illustrated children's books, which is gorgeous. And I was drawn to this one just for the sheer range of illustrations in it and different styles. So a lot of it is pages from people's sketchbooks. And I've concentrated a lot on painting recently or over the last year. But there is a part of me that enjoys drawing and wants to still have inspiration for drawing. There's a lot of variety. I think this is one of my favourite spreads actually. 
and maybe because it's mixed media. There's a little bit of painting and drawing by the looks of it. So I think there's approaches from quite a few different artists and um, talking about how they approach their art. So I'm looking forward to sitting down and reading this as well. I think some books I never end up reading because it's the illustrations in it that really speak to me. Whereas this is one I'm looking forward to actually delving into and reading properly. Just such gorgeous books. I mean, I just love books in their own right. I mean, I just love paper, full stop. But yeah, really beautiful. So I also came across um, this brand, Artway, and it's the Indigo range from them. And I picked up two albums of theirs. So this first one is A6 size. And... It's this lovely rough paper, rough textured paper and this is a concertina one so <laughs> I don't actually know how long it is I don't know maybe five foot long I'm not sure but Jerry my Dutch art friend he's been into doing concertina books lately and they do scare me because it's literally one piece of artwork in a way. But I was really tempted to have a play with it. And these are relatively inexpensive albums. I think this one was £6. Anyway, I'll, I'll link to all the products down below. Um, and I also wanted to try the bigger book. Where I can, I will buy Amazon Warehouse products or second-hand products and this one was quite a bit cheaper than the, the, the full price ones though to be honest they're not too bad themselves and it was marked as used as new and so I was, I was flicking through it and um, I was thinking oh yeah I love the edges of this paper I was cu I'm curious about how absorbent it is um, so yeah definitely keen to have a play with that but then I got to the front inside cover <laughs> and there was this piece of artwork already in it. And I just found it so funny that I've inherited someone's artwork and I think it's really lovely. Look at the little snow scene. So I've no idea. <laughs> I've no idea who did this or um, its story, but now it's in my sketchbook. So yeah, <laughs> it really made me laugh. So if by some absolute random chance anyone knows who did this, I'd obviously love to hear about it. <laughs> I don't know very much about art history and I've never formally studied art apart from a couple of courses in St Ives this past year, a few days long. And the lecturers always refer to different artists and I, unless they're like super, super famous, I've never heard of any of them. And I just felt like I need to actually educate myself more on like the history of art. So I looked at a couple of different books and, and this Dorling Kindersley book looked like a good place to start. I mean, I really know so little about any of these like movements of art. I've had a quick flick through it 
and I kind of liked the timeline that it's got and it just refers to either influential artists or particular individual pieces. Um, and obviously the, you know there's some that I recognize but a lot that I don't. So seem like a nice book for inspiration but mainly for education. It's a real good chunk of a book. And then the second to last thing that I have to show you is a gel press gel printing plate. So if you're not familiar with what a gel printing plate is, it's just basically this flat gel, like firm but gel-like surface that you can put paint onto, acrylic markers, and then press the paper onto it and when, when the paint dries it lifts up onto the paper. I have done a fair bit of gel printing in the past. I've got these two smaller plates and I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, I've made kind of abstract backgrounds for greetings cards that I sell on my craft market. But I like the idea of getting a much larger one so I can do, you know, A4 sides of sketchbooks. And I think what I like about them is that you can't 100% predict what the paint is going to look like when it's lifted. And so you're kind of forced to have an abstract element to like the texture or the layouts as you're doing it. I've got this tub of accessories that I've used with gel printing in the past. So I bought some adhesive backed foam and I made all these different kind of stamps. So you can roll a paint onto the gel pad and then you know, press into the paint and remove areas of paint or you can just apply paint onto the big stamps and then apply it onto a background. So I've made loads, I made loads of these kind of stamps. I did quite a few underwater scenes on greetings cards so I haven't done it for a while. Kind of seaweed shapes, there's a fish one there. There's different random abstract things. And then the other thing I did was just cut out cardboard shapes and you can use them as masks. So you could have you know a coloured background in the paint and stick that into it and put another colour on top. And obviously you've got the leaf shape when you remove it. Um, so I've got all sorts of different masks and yeah, all kinds of things in there for playing with the gel printing. I guess as well that these new brushes, these silicon kind of brush wedges, they might be nice to use like on the, the gel plate surface. Mm, it's a bit dusty. Um, yeah, so I'll do a video another day on gel plate printing. And so I've saved probably my favourite book till last. And this is Landscape Painting Now. So it looks like there's a few collaborators. Edited by Tom Bradway. Essay by Barry Schwabsky. And contributions by various people. But it's, it's a big old book. And I just... Well, it's no secret that I've been into landscapes last year and I just have loved looking through the massive variety of landscapes in this book. I mean, it's just an absolute feast for the eyes. I can't say I love all of the artwork in here. It's definitely not all my style, but it's just absolutely, oh, it's just a stunning book. I really like these by George Shaw, actually. And just absolutely unmistakably British. <laughs> and, you know, not the like the, the beautiful side of landscapes that we always think of. But I think they're great.
just incredible colors as well. So although I don't have a coffee table, this is definitely a coffee table type book. It's just a complete feast for the eyes. And it's a whopper as well. 368 pages so I hope you enjoyed seeing all those things I'm just going to have a play now with this paper uh, so this is Artway an Artway sketchbook and I'm just going to have a play with these Lutea paints I'll probably do a separate video on these Lutea watercolours and go into them in a bit more detail like how they're made what they're made of but for now I will just swatch them out. So this is the Carmen. In the previous video that I made when I was trying to figure out what colours I might order from Lutea, I did like colour wheel, so I'll lay this out in a kind of a colour wheel uh, arrangement. And then this is orange. So you can kind of see like tiny little particles in the orange. It's more like a kind of burnt sienna colour, but I think it's definitely the richness that I was hoping for from this one. And let's see what this yellow is like. Oh gosh. That is really solid. <laughs> I'm struggling to squeeze that out. I'm not sure if it's meant to be quite that hard. I might have a look. Let's see if look at other videos on Lutea and see if their yellow is that hard. And if not, maybe I'll contact Jackson's. I'm not sure. Oh, but I like this colour though. Yeah, I don't feel like it's too weak a yellow, it's the kind of shade I was hoping for, definitely. Although it will be a slight nuisance to deal with it being that stiff. So then I've got the blue. It's fine consistency again. I 
really liked the look of this blue. I love the shade of it. And then finally I've got the brown. So Jackson's is actually having a watercolour sale at the moment and these these are very expensive paints but they are on sale just now. Yeah, you can kind of see like little like natural particles in it. Which I like because I like my browns for landscapes and I'm often painting rock, so I think that'd be ideal. So the big question for me is how do they mix? Because that's all the colours I've got. I purposely didn't buy any green, so I want to see how the, first of all I'll see how the yellow and blue mix. I'm hoping for some lovely olives in natural landscape greens because I did really like the look of the greens in the Lutea range but I had a hunch I'd be able to mix something similar myself from these two and I really like that quite like this paper as well. I mean, the edges are slightly moved, but they haven't spread too much at all. Let's tint off the circle with a darker, darker green. And then the other thing I wondered about was how well the Carmen and the blue mix. Actually, let's use that. The blue seems super pigmented, so I'll just use a tiny bit to start with. That's a very pretty muted purple. So here's my little colour wheel. I put my hand in the blue, so I'm getting a bit of cauliflowering where I've wet the splodge that I made. The paint isn't fully dry on the paper, so it's not too absorbent. I, I think I'm going to quite enjoy it actually. It reminds me a little bit of um, the Cardi paper. I've got some little packs of thicker Cardi paper and it's lovely and rough like those, but seems to handle the paint quite well. And the paints themselves, I'm not disappointed at all. I'm really pleased with my colour selection and the mixing ability that I've got. But as I say, I'll do a more detailed video on the paints later. So thank you for joining me on my first art haul of this year. I've said in previous videos that I wanted to buy fewer art materials this year, but I'm not going to not get anything. Thank you very much for joining me anyway, and I will be doing separate videos on the Faber-Castell gelatos, on gel plate printing, and also on the different tools that I've bought for painting with beyond paintbrushes. Bye!